In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a high resolution photo just like this one by combining lower resolution photos to one huge photo just like this. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do this step by step just after I told you about Restream. This video is brought to you by Restream. We're using the Restream Live Studio right now to live stream this video to YouTube and Twitch as we created. And if you want to learn more about Restream, make sure to use the link in the video description down below to check out our Restream playlist. And using my link in the video description, you can sign up and get a $19 discount for restream. Hey there, I'm Greeny, this is Greenbox. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to use a lower resolution camera to create super high resolution photos as the one we just saw. To do this, we are using a software called PTGUI and the link to that software is in the video description down below. If you're not planning to use PTGUI, you can also use the alternative software, which also is in the description down below. And if you also don't want to do that, you can try to follow along this tutorial using Photoshop or Lightroom. All right, so let's jump into PTGUI and I'm going to show you step by step what to do to create a super high resolution photo by taking and merging multiple normal resolution ones. We are now in PTGUI and I already prepared the photos I have taken with my camera and I converted them to TIFF files. PTGUI technically is able to process raw or DNG files, but I tend to convert my raw files to TIFF first because this speeds up the workflow with PTGUI. So the first thing we now have to do is we have to import all our photos into PTGUI and to do this, we simply drag and drop the photos, which then get imported. Speaking of photos, when you take photos for such a project where you want to combine multiple photos into a big panorama or a big high resolution photo, it is important that you shoot your photos with overlap. So if we take a look at this photo here, you see that I have taken a piece of the photo and when I move to the next photo, this is uh, another piece from the photo, but there is an overlap in the middle. For example, here we can see this support structure of this roller coaster, which is here in the lower part of the image and in the next one, in the upper part of the image. It is critical that your photos have overlap, otherwise we will not be able to stitch the photos properly. When you're shooting those photos, it is crucial that you shoot all those photos from the same standpoint. So you're not moving around with your camera because this would lead into parallax, which makes stitching those photos hard to impossible. As we learned in the video in which I talk about how to create 360 degree photos, we are usually using a special panorama hat, which reduces parallax. Unfortunately, if you're shooting with a telelens, just like this one, there isn't really any panorama hat which reduces parallax using such telefocal lengths. So in my case I just used my tripod, set my camera onto the tripod and used the tripod as my point of view from which I shot all the photos. Yes, using this method there will be a slight parallax but since we're shooting telephoto with 200 millimeters and above the parallax will be minimal and PTGUI should be able to to work with that. All right, so let's go back to PTGUI and I'll show you how to combine those photos into one big one. Once all your photos are imported in PTGUI, the only thing we now need to do is we need to hit align images. If you have done a good shot with the overlaps between each photo, PTGUI should be able to stitch the photo right from the get-go. With this specific photo, we now have a problem because there are photos PTGUI does not know where to place. And those photos are 40 and 42. So let's check out those uh, photos. And those photos are photos I took off the water below the coaster. And unfortunately, they don't have an overlap or since water is moving, uh, PTGUI cannot find an overlap. In my case, in this specific photo, I'm okay with not having those photos in the final image because I only shot those photos to be sure I have enough water reflections. What we now can do is we can go over to the source image. We can go to photo number 40, which is this photo here. And we can simply delete it using the delete key 
and now it's gone. So if we go back to our panorama overview, we now see that there is one more photo from the water reflection, which PTGUI did not know where to place, which is this photo number 41. So I go back to the source images, go to photo 41, go to this one, delete it, and it's gone as well. When we're back in the panorama editor, we now see that those uh, photos, which were here in the middle, which were not aligned, are now gone since we deleted them. And all the other images, uh, PTGUI could figure out where to place them because, again, we did the overlap. So if we now click on this magnification glass over here, which opens the detail viewer, we can go in and zoom into the image. And since this was a roller coaster, or this is a roller coaster I shot, there were moving trains on it. And if we zoom into this middle train here, we will notice that it looks very odd because the train is suddenly cut off. And the reason for that is you might see those pink lines here. Those lines are lines PTGUI draws to demonstrate and show us where it does stitching seams. So one side of a pink line is a different photo than the other side of a pink line. And those pink lines are placed at places where we would not see uh, the stitching seams. So, for example, PTGUI realized that we have this more or less uniform gray um, element here, which is a support, so it placed the stitches in there rather to um, a more texture-like surface like the stone wall behind. Because if we have a slight misalignment of our uh, lens when we shoot it, so in other words, we have parallax, we would see that uh, on the on the textured surface more than on a uniform surface. So PTGUI actually is doing a lot to help us to not have parallax and a good looking image in the end. So, but in this specific case, uh, that's a bad thing because I want to either see no train or the full train. So what we can do is we can do a right click on this roller coaster train and we already see that this is a combination out of image number five and image number 52. So image number 52 shows the train and image number five shows no train. I want to have a train, so I hover over image 52, then go to the right and say edit mask. This opens up the mask editor and we are now able to tell PTGUI if there are elements in a photo we want to keep in the final project or we want to exclude from it. In this case, I want to have this train visible in the final project. So what I do, in my case, I select the green marker and then start to draw over this roller coaster train, telling PTGUI that everything in those green boundaries we want to have in. To make sure that PTGUI understands that we want to have everything, I go over to the fill tool and we now have set that everything which is green in this photo needs to be just as it is in the final project. So if we go back to the detail viewer, we will now see that the train is completely in. Right now you will see that those pink lines are straight lines and not as um, cricket as they are now. And the reason for that is PTGUI processed the image with that area and uh, tried to figure out where to place the seams, again, to help us not to see any parallax. Okay, so we have done that. But now there is a second train on this uh, roller coaster, which I want to delete. Right on top of the lift hill, there is a second train, which isn't exactly realistic since this roller coaster can only hold one train at a time. So in order to delete that, we do exactly the same, but we are going to exclude the train. So I'm going to open image number 11, again, in the mask editor, but this time I'm taking the red paint and I'm going to draw around this roller coaster train. So let's do this real quick. Take the fill tool, exclude it, and if we go back to our overview, the train is now gone on the upper part, but not on the lower part. Reason for that is we have two photos with trains on the first drop. So we just repeat this on image 52. Let's go to the mask editor, do the same thing here, draw around this roller coaster train like that and use the fill bucket, then go back to our view and it is gone. So if we zoom out, we see that this image isn't exactly leveled. There is a slight 
tilt to it, and we can tell PTGUI what a vertical line is, so PTGUI can figure out how to level the image by itself. And to do that, uh, we need to find vertical lines or uh, horizontal lines. Horizontal lines in this image will be hard because we know that this uh, tree line most likely isn't a perfect horizontal line. Also, we can't go for those horizontal supporting beams as there could be perspective and therefore it wouldn't be true horizontal. Instead, what I like to do is I like to find buildings just like the building here, which, have, which has vertical lines. And those vertical lines tend to be true vertical lines. So to do that, we have to open a photo in the control point editor. And to do this, we again do a right click on a photo that shows a vertical line. For example, here, image number 15. We open this in the control point viewer. And this brings us again to this overview. Now, what we need to do to draw a vertical line is we need to select the same photo on the left side and the right side of our control point viewer. So on the left side, we have image number 15, and on the right side, we're going to select the same image, which is image 15. Once done that, uh, at the lower left side, we see control point type to add changed to vertical line. What we now need to do is we need to find this vertical line. In this case, I want to go for this edge and I'm going to press and set one control point at the lower part of this wall. And in the second image on the right, I'm going to set that point at a higher point like so. So what we now did is we set one control point in those photos or this photo, which uh, represents a vertical line. We now need to do this a second time for, on, for another side of the image in order for PTGUI to figure out how those um, two points interact with each other and how to orient the entire picture to make those two lines truly vertical. So we do the same thing. We're going to find a photo uh, which shows a different part of the image where uh, we have vertical lines. So we go back to the detail viewer and I would say I go for this side of the building here. So let's go for image number five. Let's go to the control point um, editor on the left and also go to image number five on the control point editor on the right. And now we do the same thing. We create a vertical line control point. So I first click here and second do the same thing on the right side and click here. With that done, we can now go back to our panorama editor press F5 on the keyboard, which will realign our control points with the new information. And now the, the image is leveled based on the information we just gave it. So next up, we see that the image is now somehow stick to the bottom and cropped off. In order to fix that, we have to increase the canvas size. And we do this with the handles on the left and the bottom. So let's make the image a little higher. Okay, everything's back in. And in the next step, uh, we have to crop the image in order to tell PTGUI what we want to export and what we want to keep out of the photo. To do that, we simply go to the corner of this preview and drag and drop the corners to where we want to crop. Let's do this for all four sides. So now where we have cropped the image, you might notice that we have like empty spots in the sky. And the reason for that is I haven't taken any photos of those areas of the sky. The reason for that is I knew that faking sky using Photoshop is relatively easy and stitching sky isn't always as easy as it seems since depending on the clouds we have, the clouds can be moving rather quickly or they can change their form, their shape. And uh, I just I just opted for doing the sky in Photoshop. And that's also what we're going to do. But first, we now need to export this panorama because we are already done. We have created this high resolution panorama, which we now can export, edit in Photoshop and then finish. So we go over to the project, then create panorama. And in here we can set our panorama resolution. We can set the file format. And in my case, I of course go for the full resolution of the panorama. And when I export this high resolution photo, I tend to not export it in a JPEG file, but rather 
into a Photoshop large file as this gives me more flexibility when editing it in Photoshop. Also, depending on the size of your photo, you won't even be able to export it in anything else than a Photoshop large file because some sizes of high resolution photos just extend the supported size of some file formats. So in my case, Photoshop large in the settings, I set the bit depth to eight. If I would work with raw files, I sometimes go to a bit depth of 16, but for this demonstration, eight is fine. Uh, I'm going to say that this should be a flattened image. I don't want to have any layers in Photoshop, so I can just move on and start editing it in Photoshop and I don't have to flatten it and hit OK, create panorama. And now PT GUI is creating the panorama for us. So let's open it in Photoshop and I'm going to demonstrate how to use content aware fill to fill in the missing corners with the sky. All right, we're in Photoshop and in order to fix the sky, we have to select all those empty uh, spots. Let's do this real quick. Then go to edit content aware fill. Now we have to tell Photoshop what parts of the photo we want to use to fill in those missing gaps. Uh, Photoshop did already a pretty good job in determining that we want to fill in the skies, but just to make sure, let's uh, remove all pieces of sky that have some sort of tree, roller coaster rail, or supports in it. And uh, to do this, we simply use the the um, reduce tool of the content aware fill uh, effect, draw around those uh, areas which we don't want to have. And once we have done that, we can simply hit OK and Photoshop's content aware fill will fill those empty spots for us. And the high resolution photo is done. And since it is a high resolution photo, we of course can zoom in into details just like this bird over here. So yeah, there's that. And once you're in Photoshop, you can start to go like into details of the photo and start to fix minor details. For example, uh, we had in the background of this roller coaster, there was a cable car running. And of course I did not um, wait for the cable cars to pass. So I would always take the, the photo at the same spot of the cable, which means if we take a look at this cable, we might have some misalignments of the cables, for example here, but that's not a problem uh, because we can simply remove those cables using Photoshop and with just a few clicks we can remove those cables and have it a non-issue. Of course, touch-ups like these can take some time, but once you're done, you can simply export and save this photo you are left with a high resolution photo you have taken with a probably not so high resolution camera, just like this one. I really hope this video helped you in understanding how to create a high resolution photo using PT GUI. In case it did, let me know in the comment section down below or at least leave me a thumbs up so I know that actually someone was helped using this video so I can do more videos like this in the future and I can help more people. All right, once again, I'm Greeny. This is Greenbox. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below and I will see you in another video. Thanks for watching. Feel free to click a video here on the end card and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.